experimental research methods are quantitative methods and basic purpose is to establish cause and effect relationship between two variables, independent variable and dependent variable. Today we will discuss about various types of designs of experimental method. There are many, but they are grouped under five. One is pre-experimental design, other is true experimental design, factorial design, quasi-experimental design and time series design. Under each group we will see what kind of designs can be employed by the researcher, keeping again in mind the threats to internal validity as well as external validity. The first design is called pre-experimental design. It is very weak design and generally a single, it is called a single shot design. That means there is only one group and this group is given independent variable that is treatment to see its effect on dependent variable. For example, you want to introduce new textbooks. So you select a group, give this new textbook to them, to the subjects to read and then give them the attitude test. And then you say whether their attitude is this because of the new textbooks. Now you will see how weak this design is, but in certain circumstances one has to use them. But as you know that there are a lot of threats to internal validity as well as external validity. So the results also cannot be generalized. So this is called pre-experimental design. And how it is shown? We know that the treatment, pre-test treatment and post-test have to be shown. Now this design is called single group post-test design. Treatment is always given the, is denoted by X and post-test is denoted by T2. So we will show X and T2. Now you want to enhance the quality of this pre-experimental design. So what we do? We add pre-test. So it is, it is a single shot experiment, single group experiment, but instead of only giving independent variable and post-test, we also give pre-test, then we give them the treatment and then post-test. So this is called single group pre-test, post-test design. Let us take the same example. Attitude test is given before introduction of new textbooks. So first you know what is their attitude towards books. Then you give them the new textbooks and after reading that you give them the attitude test once again that is called post test. So now you have T1, you have X and you have T2. The difference between T1 and T2 of the same group, if, if there is a difference then you will know this difference is significant, you will say there is an attitude change. But can you say it is because of your independent variable? It is just because of seeing, reading your textbooks. So again there are threats to because there are no controls over here. There is no internal control that is why the internal validity is at threat. So this is called pre-experimental design. T1, X and T2. There is a third design for pre-experimental method. Now what we do? We add one more group which is called control group. One is experimental group and other is control group. So one group reads the new textbooks, other control group does not need read that. They are with their regular textbooks. Now but there is no pretest. Now that you have employed two groups, experimental and control group, there is no need for giving pretest. You are only testing, you are only checking the difference between post-test of two groups. Please remember that these groups are not randomized. These subjects in these groups are not selected using random techniques. So that is why this is weak. Though we are using experimental and control group, the whole design is weak and that is why it is called pre-experimental design. So there are two tests, post-tests, one of experimental group and one of control group. 
And the difference between two tests, post tests, the researcher thinks that it is because of the treatment given by the researcher. Now let us see what is true experimental designs mean. True experimental designs, it is truly experimental. So the sample is selected using randomized techniques. So always it is two groups because there is always a control group and experimental group. The subjects are selected using randomized techniques and either you give them a pre-test or post-test. Let us see true experimental designs. There again, there are many designs available under true experiment. One is two groups, randomized subjects, post-test only design, there is no pre-test. Then you add two groups, randomized match subjects, post-test only design. We will see every design in detail. In these two, there is only post-test. The third type is two groups, randomized, pre-test, post-test design. We have introduced pre-test in this. The fourth type of design is randomized Solomon three group design, where instead of two groups, there are three groups. And one more design is called randomized Solomon four groups design. Here we have four groups and the treatment is given to three groups. We will see in detail, but the groups used are four. Now let us see the true experimental design, design one. There are two groups which are randomized subject and there is only post-test. What happens here? One group is experimental group, other group is control group. And we are only giving post-test to both. But to one group we are giving the treatment and to another group we are not giving. Let us take the same example. You want them to find out whether the new textbooks are really good. They are interesting. They change the attitude of the students towards reading. So now these new textbooks are introduced and to the two groups. But why this design is called true design, true experimental design? Because of that word randomized subjects. How do we randomize the subjects? Let us see that. For randomization, we must understand the word random. Random does not mean in haphazard manner, in any way you like. That is not random. Random is a very systematic arrangement of selecting sample. Random means every subject in the population you have selected has every chance of being in, the, in your group. For random assignment, you should have a sample size which is big sample size large sample size. What is the large sample definition? It is more than 30. If you have only 10, then 5 will go here and 5 will go to control group. And that will not really take care of, uh, of the variables which you really think that they should be randomly assigned. That's why you should select a sample, large sample and then assign them to experimental and control group. This is called random assignment. If you have 30 students, now 15 should go here and 15 should go there. How we can put them? You, you prepare, one is you prepare cheat. Give number to each one of them and just randomly select one here and one there because they are already selected on the basis of some variable. So randomly one will go here, one will go there. So 15 students from that will go to one group, 15 will go to that. This is called random assignment of subjects in two groups. Now we can go one step ahead. We can match the subjects with random assignment. For example, you think that their score on science is very important. So what we can do? These 30 students whom you have selected as sample, their scores can be found out. Now there are six students who have similar marks. So out of these six students, three should go in experimental group and three should go there. So what we are doing, again randomly putting three here and three there. Again put the cheats on their numbers and select any three for experimental, any three for control. But what we have done, you have matched them. So subject A and subject B have same marks, but one is in control group, one is in experimental group. Similarly, other four students have 48 marks or 46 marks. 
Similarly, you can put them randomly in two groups. This is called matching subjects. We have first matched them and then we have put them randomly in two groups. So, we are taking care of both. The third one is random assignment on the basis of homogeneous selection. We want to select homogeneous students in each group. Again, assignment has to be random. So, these 30 students or 40 students whom you have selected, they should be showing you homogeneous score on certain aspects which you think as a researcher is important. So, for example, if you see gender, gender is playing a game, then you do not want boys in that, have all girls, you do not want women there, have all males, that is also possible. So, they are homogeneous group. You want all 8 standard students, you can have all 8 standard students. So, homogeneity can be first established and once it is established, then they are randomly put into two groups. If any of these things are not possible, then what we, use, what we do? We use statistical technique. There is a statistical technique called analysis of variance and in analysis of variance, there is one more technique which is called analysis of covariance. So, if we use analysis of covariance and we establish that before we started the experiment, both the groups did not have significant difference on the variable which you are testing. Say in this case, attitude. You show it statistically that these two groups are same. They are not different significantly, though you have not matched them, though you have not put them on homogeneity or any other ground. Statistically, we can use this analysis of covariance to make sure that the groups were similar in nature before we started the experiment. If any of these techniques are not helpful, what we can do? We can use the same subjects for their own control. That means, there are two treatments. One is treatment, other is no treatment or whatever regular treatment. So, we use the same group for two treatments, one after the other. That means, they do not have to be matched because the same students are used as experimental and same students are used as control. So, their two readings on two different occasions are taken for, this is not similar to pre-experimental design. We are using the same subjects which are randomly selected. They are not selected in haphazard manner. They are selected using randomization technique and now that they are with you, you are using two treatments one after the other. So, we are using the control, we are using the subjects for their own control. This is one more way of establishing control over the internal validity. Now, let us see once again, we said that the student should be matched in two groups. How this can be achieved? We have said that they can be matched subject by subject. One has 60 percent marks, other also has 60 percent mark. One randomly goes to experimental group another randomly goes to control group. This is called subject to subject matching. Not necessarily only achievement, there are many uh, observations which you are already doing variables on which you want to equate them. So, this is matching means equating students subject by subject and one goes here, one goes to experiment. So, now you are very sure that you have matched them. Another way of doing it by matching for mean and SD. What we are doing? So, we have 30, we randomly put them into two groups and see the mean, average. What is the average of one particular aspect? The score, say achievement or say attitude. So, you have to see that what is the mean score of experimental group and what is the mean score of control group? What is the SD? So, if we match them on these two aspects, then we do not have to match them on subject to subject manner. So, this is what we are doing here instead of matching subject one by one, we are saying the group as a group, this group has mean of say 17, other group also has mean of 17 or 16.8. So, they are nearly equal groups, their SD is 4 here, their SD is 3.8 there. So, they are nearly similar groups. So, we can use these groups as any group can be used as experimental, any group can be used as control group. This happens 
when your experimental group is in one school and control group is in another you can you can't put them because conducting experiment in two schools simultaneously is administratively not possible so you are taking one group experimental group from, from one school and control group from another school you have to see that they are equal they can, we can match them using the mean and hd this is the third way in which we can match the subjects that is ranking of subjects on matching variable you can rank them because they may not have the same marks but you can rank them and rank 1 2 3 4 one goes here two goes there so the ranking also helps us it is near to matching the subject on their variables but finding out exactly same score for two may be difficult and there we can have ranking and the first and second rank third and fourth rank like that we can put them randomly in either in experimental group or control group here the researcher's bias must not come in because research is researcher is always thinking that his or her program or new textbooks or new uh, whatever inputs are planned they should prove positive so in doing that unknowingly good students good in court good students may be put in experimental group and not so good students may be put into control group this should not happen this selection in two groups or sending them to two groups should be totally random then only the experiment is called true experiment otherwise it is either pre experiment or it is quasi experiment now that we understand what is randomization and what is match subjects let's go to second design of true experimental design that is called two groups randomize match subjects but still post test design we don't have pre test post test only but there are two groups and where we have randomized and we have matched subjects this will look like this experimental group gets a treatment and experimental and control group both get post test and the difference in post test of both these groups will give you a definite score from which you can infer whether your treatment is effective or not effective because these groups were formed using randomization and they were also match on certain aspects variables which you think are important now we go to still complicated still more in within true experiment also there are more strong and strong and strong experiments so this design is called two groups randomized pre test post test design here we have introduced the groups are selected using randomization but instead of only post test we have introduced pre test now how is it is represented experimental group and control group both have pre test then experimental group has treatment and both the groups have post test if you remember in pre experimental design also we had this design that is experimental group and control groups are there and there are pre test and post test so what is the difference difference is with randomization the moment you randomize the sample the subjects in two groups you, the researcher has full control if not full to a great extent he or she has a control and that means we are manipulating certain variables in order to show the relationship which is causal relationship this is happening because of this so that confidence for stating this statement making this statement or stating this finding we need to randomize the groups so here this is a true experimental design where we have randomized the groups and we also have introduced pre test so it is two groups randomize pre test post test design now let us go one step ahead there are two designs which are called solomon experimental designs solomon 3 group and solomon 4 group so the first one is called randomize solomon 3 groups design in this we have you see here one experimental group where pre test is given and post test is given 
there is one control group where pre-test is given and post-test is given. Now, what is the difference? The experimental group gets treatment. So, this is like our two groups randomized pre and post-test design. Now, we add one more control group where we do not give the pre-test, we give the treatment and we give the post-test. So, what happens here? We are taking out the effect of pre-test. Actually, in the real sense of the term, it is not a control group because we are giving it a treatment. But here, it is used for comparison to take out the effect of pre-test because we have already seen that pre-test also has an effect on post-test. Why? Because it is basically test wiseness that instrumentation is there, test is there. So, once you take a test, to some extent our subjects are aware what kind of questions are asked. So, in order to nullify that effect, what we are doing? The third group does not have a pre-test, it only has treatment and post-test. So, now by comparing their post-test results, post-test scores, we can definitely say with a full confidence, with a confidence to a greater extent that it is because of our treatment. So, we are establishing the relationship between the treatment that is independent variable and dependent variable with more strong conviction. There is one more Solomon group design which is called Solomon 4 group design. But again that word randomize is very important. Please remember that when we call it true experiment, the word randomization is very important. That means the researcher bias is taken out. The groups, the subjects who are in experimental group and in control group, they are randomly put into those two groups. So, this design is called randomized Solomon 4 group design. What happens here? Like last time, there are three groups are already there. One experimental group where you are giving pre-test, treatment and post-test. Then there is control group 1 where pre-test is given, but there is no treatment and post-test is given like that pre-experimental group. Here also the similar control group is used where pre and post are given, but there is one group gets a treatment, other group does not get a treatment. This is a regular two group design. Now we are adding one more group where last time we also said there is no pre-test. In the three Solomon 3 group, we said there is no pre-test, there is treatment and post-test. Similarly, in here also we introduce the third group which does not have pre-test, but which has a treatment and which has a post-test. So, here we are trying to see the effect of pre-test. These post-test scores are not affected by the pre-test. Now, we are introducing one more group, control group, where there is no pre-test, where there is no treatment, but there is a post-test. So, we are giving them post-test only. So, now you will see in this slide that there are four scores of post-test. Post-test for experimental group, post-test for control group 1, post-test for control group 2 and only post-test group that is called control group 3. We are comparing these four keeping in mind that the second group did not have treatment, the third group did have a treatment, but there was no pre-test and the fourth group does not have pre-test scores and does not have treatment. We will have to see how to use the statistics for finding out comparing these four scores, but that will we can learn that a little later. Here what we are trying to do? We are trying to understand the logic of using designing a research experiment which has variety of controls and the researcher can manipulate. Here you will see so many variables are manipulated. The effect of pretest is manipulated, the effect of treatment is manipulated, only post-test is given. So, variety of things there are four groups of course, for the researcher this is more complex, but the results, the findings which you would be putting up because of randomized groups, it is called a true experiment. It is a true experimental design and the researcher comes out with a more confidence. One more design is called factorial design. Again, this is a statistical design. 
factorial design where we have 2 by 2 or 2 by 3 or 3 by 3. There are many, there are factors first of all identified which are these factors which may have effect on your dependent variable. So, generally we have only one independent variable. If you have two independent variables, if you have three independent variables, how you will analyze that, how you will organize it. So, this factorial design will tell you that it is not one by one, it is there are two variables. For example, you want to see whether socioeconomic status and home environment have an effect of on your scholastic achievement. Whether your scholastic achievement goes higher up if your socioeconomic status and home environments are affecting that. See then what happens in socioeconomic status you have high and low. In home environment also you have high and low, you can also have a medium. So, if you find out, if you plan it, you will see a 2 by 2 design. In that there are suppose 2 by 2, so high ACS and high home environment high ACS and low home environment and low ACS and low home environment. So, there are four and in each cell there would be students, there would be subjects. So, you are selecting subjects who satisfy these two criteria and among them there are two more sub criteria. So, you have four groups, but this design will employ the factorial design and it will find out F ratio so that you would know whether the effect of independent variable is really taking place on dependent variable. One more advantage of using a factorial analysis or factorial design is that it also gives the researcher understanding about interaction. We are isolating, ACS socioeconomic status is isolated, home environment is also isolated, but there can be an effect interaction among these two which generally we do not study. Here what happens these two are independent variables and they may have interaction. So, while calculating F ratio you get three F ratios. One F ratio is for socioeconomic status having impact on your dependent variable. Another F ratio is for your home environment having impact on your dependent variable and the third F ratio is for interaction. So, interaction of ACS and home environment having effect on your dependent variable. This is the beauty of this factorial design. These were the true experimental designs. Before that we studied what is pre-experimental. In pre-experimental we said there is no, it is a weak, it is not a very strong experimental design, it is a weak and nobody really takes it very seriously. People think that you had a group with you, so you did it. Generally, the action research, you have heard about action research. So, you want to test effectiveness of something, some inputs for your own standard 6 students. So, what you do? You are taking only one group and it is not randomized because you are not interested in generalizing. You are interested only in seeing whether this input is effective for your own class. So, you can use pre-experimental design for such group. You are not, there you are not really concerned about randomization or matching and having another group. There is no need. You are interested, your interest, your purpose is different. Now, there is a third type of, third group of design which is called quasi-experimental design. Quasi-experimental designs are stronger than pre-experimental designs. There are two types of quasi-experimental designs. One is non-randomized control group pre-test post-test design and other is counter balance design. Let us see the first one, non-randomized control group pre-test post-test design. As it states, there is a pre-test for both experimental group and control group. There is a treatment and there are post-tests. What is more important? This is non-randomized. There are two groups, so it is a little stronger but the groups are selected not by using matching or by using randomization, they are non-randomized control group. Again the same example I will give, if you want to test some variable in two different schools, you are not selecting students out of the class, class of 50, you are taking the whole class and they are put into experimental group 
in another school there are 58 students you are not taking out another 18 from them because that also has an impact when you have intact group and you take out some students for your experiment then the generalization also becomes a little difficult in the sense when they are together do they behave differently when they are in large class do they behave differently when they are in small class so though 18 you have taken from 58 to 18 would there be a problem in generalizing we have to think about these variables also they may come into your taking decisions or your findings regarding the relationship between independent and dependent variable. This quasi experimental design like pre experimental it has non randomized experimental and control group. One more design of quasi experimental design is called counter balance design. Here what happens rotation of groups is the keyword at periodic intervals. So, there are two groups which are rotated for two different treatments. The counterbalance experiment will look like this. Group 1 first is treatment 1 and then treatment 2. Group 2 has treatment 2 and then treatment 1. There are two groups, but we are not calling them experimental group and control group because both are undergoing the same treatment. Only change is the sequence first which and second which treatment. So, for example, you want to introduce collaborative methods. There are two different methods. You have two groups in your class. There are two different uh, treatments. So, treatment 1 they take treatment 1 first and treatment 2 later. Whereas, the other group takes treatment 2 first and treatment 1 later. So, we are rotating the groups among themselves. So, this is called a rotation group design or crossover design. So, researcher will get four readings, two for each group and the difference of course, statistically how to find the difference is another way, but the differences in these two will give you confidence in saying whether the independent variable has effect on dependent variable. Now, let us see one more type of design which is called time series design. The word time is important. It is a series of measurements of dependent variable before introducing treatment and after treatment is introduced. So, you are introducing a treatment say in July. So, you will take the observations before July. So, maybe March, April, May, June you have four readings. Then you give them a treatment and then you test them again on different four different time zones. That means, July, August, September, October, November. So, you have four readings before and four readings after the treatment and you will see a difference in achievement or in that variable which is dependent variable in order to say whether it is because of your independent variable. If there is no change in four readings beforehand and if there is a change after treatment in a more substantial manner, significant manner, then you definitely can see the difference which is the, the change in independent variable is because of the treatment. This is called time series design. There also we can have two different types. One is single group time series design and control group time series design. In single group time series design, we have only one group where four readings or five readings are taken before treatment and another four readings or five readings are taken after the treatment on single group. Now, there is a next design we will show you which is called two groups that is control group time series design. You have experimental group and you have control group. For experimental group and control group you are taking the same readings, four readings on particular occasion before the treatment is given. Then you give a treatment to experimental group and do not give that treatment to control group. Then after the treatment is given you again take four readings in various time zones for both experimental as well as control. So, now you have observations with you which would help you to really confidently say whether this change independent variable is because of 
independent variable. Here what we have done, we have used two groups, but we have used different readings at different times. So, this shows us whether there was already there was going to be a change because of maturation, because of time, because of many other variables. So, what we are doing, we are trying to consider the threats to internal validity by employing four different observations before the treatment. Similarly, instead of taking only one observation after the treatment as we have been doing so far, here the observations are taken again across the time and this is for both the groups control as well as experiment. Again statistics which is used for it is different and we have to study that, but here theoretically you will see the difference between the observations on experimental and control group would give a confidence to the researcher to show the relationship cause and effect relationship between independent and dependent variable. We discussed in this session different types of experimental designs. We saw that there are some designs which are called pre-experimental, some are true experimental designs where the, the researcher is confident for generalizability of his or her research findings. We also discuss about time series and counterbalance experimental designs. Many of these designs can be employed keeping in mind the objectives and the hypothesis the researcher has set before him or her. To select the most appropriate one, the one which the researcher can use. For that the researcher also must know, must have full control. He or she must know the details of this design. Also other support is required. So keeping all these things in mind, but mainly your objectives and hypothesis, you have to select the most appropriate design for your research. This selection is very important. Thank you.